Hello, salve te omnes. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Turkelson. I teach Latin at Sacred Heart High School in Kingston, Massachusetts. And I also do a little moonlighting in virtual high school. So I teach a Latin one class um, in virtual high school. This is my second year doing that. And I'm uh, been, my first year I made a series of videos uh, um, covering the, the exercises in the text that we use for that virtual high school class, um, which is Ecce Romani. That's the name of the textbook, the Latin textbook for the Latin one class. And um, so I make this these videos primarily for them since they don't have the benefit of a, a teacher to sort of guide them through the textbook the way that a traditional classroom does. Um, but I, these videos can be used uh, by anyone who is, you know, having trouble figuring out Ecce Romani exercises uh, in general. My own classes use this textbook, um, especially seventh and eighth and ninth grades, and um, and even tenth grade too. Um, and so it's really intended to really be a guide uh, to anyone who is using Ecce Romani as a, a textbook in a Latin class. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to um, dwell on pronunciation or any kind of a grand introduction to the book or to Latin in general, but uh, really going to get almost right to the exercises because I know at least the virtual high school students, that's, that's really primarily what, what benefit they're going to get from watching the videos. I, I can do a general introduction of Latin and Ecce Romani in another video. Uh, if that's helpful, but for this one, I'm really going to cut right to the chase. I'm not going to, you'll, you'll pick up on pronunciation from the way, um, well, there, there is a pronunciation guide in the textbook itself, but also I think you can get a feel for it just by listening to the way that I say the words and, um, and, uh, use that as sort of a model for yourselves. Um, so right now for the purposes of, of exercises I think or for the purpose of, of every really getting acquainted with every chapter in the book it's always important to look at the, the picture here we have two girls obviously underneath a tree one is writing on a tablet here um, sort of like the ancient predecessor of our iPad perhaps and um, another girl is reading a book which is on a scroll um, which is really how books were written or, or produced back then in ancient Roman times. So we have two girls. Where are they? They're under a tree. Off in the distance, we see what is called a villa, a villa rustica, which is a country house, a country house and farm. These girls are low, uh, they're, they're living during the summer months. They're living in a place called Baiae, which we see right here. Baiae is in the right in the, in the Bay of Naples last last year I uh, no this this past year I uh, led a, a, a trip to Italy with um, uh, about 90 people on it and so we were down in that section uh, of Italy called the Bay of Naples this is where um, Pom the, uh, the the volcano uh, Mount Vesuvius erupted um, the this story takes place after that has already happened um, but Baiae is a very nice sort of resort sort of area for the wealthy. And that is where these girls, uh, that's the background that these girls enjoy, being from a wealthy Roman family. Uh, Cornelia's father is a senator, a Roman senator. And um, Flavia we see here and there. Um, but And we don't really know too much about her family. She sort of is in the story and then not so much in the story until later on. But we can assume that they both come from fairly well-to-do families and um, and they have this you know one, at least Cornelia has this very grand sort of villa in the background and we get more acquainted with that as we go by so orient yourself by the picture take note of everything in the picture to help guide with the story that's attached to the first to, the, to each chapter and also read these uh, carefully too to sort of give you a heads up as to what to expect for the chapter here we have meet Cornelia and Flavia and also uh, general parts of speech are covered in Latin, nouns, adjectives, and verbs. So hopefully you won't have too much trouble recognizing those. Uh, many of you are ninth and 10th graders, so I'm assuming you've seen a few nouns, adjectives, and verbs. Now they're treated differently in Latin uh, than they are in English, and I'll maybe have a few notes along the way to sort of um, 
uh, clarify that, you'll see some some obvious differences between how English, the word order of English is versus the word order of Latin. But that all in good time can can be sort of well understood, I think. So let's have a look at the story, keeping in mind our picture here. Um, so the chapter is called Two Roman Girls. And typically, uh, there will be a passage uh, this is a quite brief passage. You'll see these passages uh, towards the end of the book get up to, you know, 30, <coughs> excuse me, like 25, 30, 40 lines sometimes. Um, but this one very brief just to sort of get your feet wet a little bit. And uh, so there's a passage, a lined passage. This one only has six lines and you see the number of five here. So this is line one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that um, corresponds to these numbers here. All uh, words in line one of the passage are right here. Eke, puella, nomine, and quae. All words on line two are here. All words in line three start here and go down to here. Line four words are here. Line five words are here. And they obviously repeat here and there throughout, this, throughout the passage. So important to memorize, uh, whether using an app like Quizlet or a website like Quizlet, uh, which has... Uh, many 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 flashcard decks that many teachers have created I, I have many um, uh, flashcard uh, decks uh, if you want to look up this name at quizlet.com you'll see that I have uh, many um, Eke Romani uh, chapter like vocabulary organized by chapter um, and uh, it should be, uh, it's fairly well organized, as I recall. So you can go there and take a look at those, or, you know, just look up Eke Romani, which again is spelled like this, in Quizlet.com, and you'll see there's plenty of resources there to work with. Um, <coughs> now I'd like to just read this passage so you have a sense of the pronunciation. Again, I'm not going to go into a full on pronunciation guide. Uh, there is a, a pronunciation guide in the textbook before the first chapter and somewhere in the introduction you'll see that there is a guide to how to pronounce certain things. A uh, quick, um, uh, quick, quick overview. All C's are hard C's. No soft C's like, uh, like say the word ceiling for example. That, that is a soft C but the word cat is a hard C, right? C. Uh, all C's um, are are hard C's in the classical pronunciation of Latin. There are different pronunciations. There's there's classical pronunciation, which is the one that I'll be using, and there's also um, ecclesiastical uh, or church Latin, which uh, varies from that. And you know, it's it's really a matter of choice. Uh, I happen to adhere to the classical pronunciation, although I vary from it too. In classical uh, Latin, the V, which you see right here, the V is pronounced like a W, but I. I I was raised on the V sound, so I, I go with the the V making the V sound. But that's that's a matter of choice for uh, depending on the teacher, or depending on the student. Really, um, there are no Romans around to make sure that we're pronouncing their la their language correctly. But I mean, having said that, I do have respect for how they pr pronounce their 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 language. But with regard to the V, I vary from. Uh, from some people or from many people who prefer that the W sound for a V. So that's just one little sort of variable um, f with uh, how to pronounce things. But here is the pronunciation um, that, I w that I go with for the first story here. So, Eke, in pictura est puella nomine Cornelia. Cornelia est puella romana quae in Italia habitat. Etiam in pictura est villa rustica Ubi Cornelia aestate habitat. Cornelia est laita quod iam in villa habitat. Cornelia iam sub arbore sedet et legit. Etiam in pictura est altera puella, nomine Flavia. Flavia est puella romana quae in villa vicina habitat. Dum Cornelia legit, Flavia scribit. Laita est Flavia, Cornelia Yam in Villa Habitat. So using the words here, the, the, the vocabulary underneath, you can quickly figure out <clears throat> what's being said here. I'll go just through the first two lines and then 
and maybe just the first couple of questions in exercise 1a which has a various a, a number of questions about what's going on in the passage here um, and um, and then you can work on the rest. You should read through this carefully and uh, try to think and speak in Latin as opposed to translating word for word. You will have to do a fair amount of translation for virtual high school and certainly for my own classes at Sacred Heart. Um, but whenever possible, try to think in the native language as opposed to translating everything rigorously. There's, there's a lot to be said for learning Latin the natural way which is like the way that your mothers and fathers taught you how to speak English, just by speaking it and saying it and thinking it wherever possible. Uh, um, one more note, there are also vocabulary words down here to guide you for the questions. You see quis est Cornelia, so this means who is Cornelia, and those answers can be found up above here in the passage. So, um, the first two lines. Look, in the picture is a girl named Cornelia. Cornelia is a Roman girl who lives in Italy. Also in the picture is a country house and farm where Cornelia lives in the summer. Two quick notes here. You might see uh, the verb here in this instance, lives, comes at the end of the sentence. This is not the way we do it in English. If we were doing this sentence right here, we would say, Cornelia est Romana Puella quae habitat in Italia. That would be the, the word order in English. But in Latin, two things to notice right away is that the adjective comes after the noun that it modifies, whereas in English we would say Roman girl. The Romans said girl Roman, which is kind of funky for us English speakers. And also the verb comes at the end instead of uh, coming before um, this prepositional phrase here in Italia. So literally, if we were doing this in, in English, if we were transliterating it, we would say Cornelia is girl Roman who in Italy lives. And that is standard sort of word order for Latin. So it's just something to get used to, really. You see habitat here at the end of this sentence as well. I mean, this one would be uh, also in picture is country house and farm where Cornelia in the summer lives. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm realizing I just, I think I skipped over everything. So look, in the picture is a girl named Cornelia. Cornelia is a Roman girl who lives in Italy. Also in the picture is a country house and farm where Cornelia lives in the summer. So I'll leave you to look at the vocabulary and figure out the rest of it. But I think I can give you the first two answers to numbers one and two here. I was going to go up to three or four, but I think I, since we're sort of at the early, easy stages here, I'm just going to do the first two questions for you, and then you can figure out the rest of it. So the first question asks, quiz est Cornelia. Quiz means who, so est is is, which I think, which is not even given here, but I think the the, the authors of the textbook rely on you to figure that out. In, pic, in the picture, is a girl. So something, most vocabulary, especially when it's difficult, it will be spelled out here. But sometimes they'll say, well, okay, I'm pretty sure the students can figure out that est here means is. Um, so who is Cornelia? Now, if we answer this in Latin, which this asks the students to do, responde latine, answer in Latin, then we would say, we would go back to the story and we see uh, who is Cornelia. We would say Cornelia es puella romana. Cornelia is a Roman girl. So that would be enough of an answer right there. But I, I, I do ask for full sentences. Cornelia est puella romana. Now that's enough right there. But if you want to work like work those muscles a little bit and get um, as much exposure to the language as possible, why not um, you know, write out the rest of that sentence there? So Cornelia est puella romana quae in Italia habitat Cornelia is a Roman girl who lives in Italy so that's a good full sentence so no just simple puella romana as the answer but a full sentence Cornelia's puella romana quae in Italia habitat would be a good answer to that one number two ubi habitat Cornelia now some of you are saying what's ubi ubi was given up here where it can mean where in the sense like this is the house where I live or it can be a question word as well like where do you live so ubi habitat Cornelia this is a question where does Cornelia live 
Now we can look right here and we see Cornelia is a Roman girl who lives in Italy. So we could say this, we could answer this question like this. Cornelia in Italia habitat. Using good Latin word order, verb at the end there. Cornelia lives in Italy. So there is a quick introduction to the first uh, chapter's storyline and a couple of questions from uh, exercise 1A. You will see that the all of the A exercises in the text ask questions about the passage and they get more and more detailed and involved as time goes on. But for now, right now we're just getting introduced to a little bit of vocabulary who and why and what is so and so doing see quid facet cornelia i'll let you figure that out but i will say that cornelia the answer can be found right there quid facet cornelia cornelia so barbare said it at legget and again look over the vocabulary carefully and shouldn't be too much trouble getting through this first exercise i hope Okay, I will give videos for exercises 1B and 1C that will be much shorter than this because this was kind of an introductory sort of video. So look for 1B and 1C on my YouTube page. Okay, good luck.